once again, this is Path to Wellness. And you know how we do it on this program. We talk about your health, your wellness, because it's so important. Whatever we achieve will be external. In fact, we will not even be able to enjoy it if we don't live healthily, if we're not well. So it's so important that we focus on our wellness, our healing, and all is very crucial. And to take us on this journey, now this is a conversation we started a few weeks back on stress and i promised that we were going to have a part two in fact our guest on that day also agreed and obliged that she will be here again for us to continue this conversation so today she's here and we're going to continue our conversation on stress management join me as i welcome guno ebute back to path to wellness welcome ma'am Thank you very much. Thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah, we are so glad that you accepted to do this again with us today. So thank you once again. Now, please, just by way of recap and introduction, can you start by introducing yourself? Tell us a bit about you and what you do. Okay, thank you very much. Um, my name is Buno Okute, and I am a stress management coach. I'm a wellness coach, a life coach, a health coach, and an NLP practitioner. And I actually help stressed people, whether the stunts of life, you know, improve their overall health and wellness such that they are healthier, happier, more productive, and more energetic. Wow, interesting. Thank you for that introduction. Now, when we started, we were looking at stress. Uh, but I want us to quickly backtrack and talk about what stress is again, because sometimes we use the word I'm stressed, I'm stressed, and we don't even know what stress is. So let's start from there as we go further. Yeah, stress actually has lots of definition because stress is actually how our body reacts, adjusts, or responds to a trigger, you know, and it could also be a response to physical, mental, or emotional pressure. You know, when you are under pressure, intense pressure, that is stress. You know, stress is also a, a feeling of physical and emotional tension in our body. And it's also a feeling of inadequacy. When you feel like you're not enough, you don't have enough, you know, that also is stress. And... Stress is also <clears throat> when your physical, when your, your conscious and your unconscious mind, they are out of alignment. That mm. is also stress because, you know, a lot of times you have times when you say, oh, part of me wants to do this, part of me does not want to do this. You know, so you are out of alignment. And until you bring the two minds together, you see, so that all of you wants to do this, you mm. will be stressed. Because the mind only works when there is clarity. So that is also stress. Yeah. Wow, interesting. So we have, it, it means that what would be stressful for one person may not be stressful for another person because it's right. how we respond. So stress is not exactly external. It is an internal thing with us and how we manage um, life situation so can you can you um like go further a bit to talk about how this management happens because since stress is more about our management of life situations how does this management help us have less stress or how does this management increase the stress level we we face yeah so stress is basically more of um, is based on our perception and interpretation of what situation actually means to us. You know, like you rightly said, it's it's one size does not fit all. So what may be stressful for one may not be stressful for another. And stress is not just the physical um, trigger. You know, it's, it's caused by both physical and mental trigger because a lot of times, like when people are mentally stressed, for example, in a physical situation, maybe you had a gunshot or you had fire, fire, fire. Now, at that time, there is a physical trigger. 
You see, there is a physical situation that actually causes you to react. So now you're going to react either by running towards the trigger or running away from the trigger, or you're going to be stand and be fixed in a spot. You know, you're like, you are just frozen in a spot. You know, it's either going to happen like that, or sometimes like when you are lying down in your bed and you want to sleep at night <clears throat> because our emotions actually amplify in the night. So when you're lying down in your bed, you begin to think. You see, when you start overthinking things, you see, because a lot of times when we are faced with challenging situations, we don't see the problem as it is. We see it far worse than it is. And that is when we start to create worst case scenarios in our mind. You see, so at that time, you are not seeing it as it is. You are seeing it far worse than it is. So you overthink the whole situation. And then you're catastrophizing. You're thinking, ah, what if this and that were to happen? Because I have not paid these children's school fees. Maybe the person is financially stressed, you know, and the person is thinking of how he has not been able to meet his needs. You know, how he's feeling. You see, what I talked about, the feeling of inadequacy. You, know, you feel mm -hmm. like you're not enough. You don't have enough, you know. And you start to overthink it. You're not thinking about ways that you're going to make money. No, you're thinking of worst case scenario. What if this contract does not work? And you're not thinking, what if it works? You say, yeah, you're thinking, what if this contract does not work? Ah, that means I'll not be able to have money. I'll not be able to pay my children's school fees. I'll not be able to pay the rent. I'll not be able to pay. So you're creating this. And what if I'm not able to pay the rent? Oh, that means the landlord will evict us. And you are not just thinking these things. Sometimes you're creating mental pictures of you being mm. out, of being evicted. And then all these things cause you to react physically. You begin to feel the physical tension. You see, so you begin to feel the fear of now of something that has not yet happened at this present moment. You see, and that is stress. That will cause you not to sleep well. It will cause you to wake up exhausted, tired. You see, not even ready to face the day because your sleep was supposed to be refreshing, but it's not going to be. You see why? Because you were overthinking into the night. And then eventually maybe you slept very late and then you had little sleep because your sleep was not restive. You see, it was not restorative. It was not refreshing. Then you probably wake up with a headache. You see, because you haven't even slept well. You see, so this, and then when you wake up with a headache during the day, you are lacking focus and concentration. You're not able to concentrate on anything. And then your mind is still overthinking as you go through your day. Then you lack energy to, to go about your day-to-day -day task because you'll be low on energy. You haven't slept well, you know. And then, you know, so it just happens like this. And then it could lead to, if it repeats itself the same night, because a lot of people are in a constantly stressed environment. If it repeats itself the next night and the next night, and then you find out that you just had weeks, that you have not been sleeping well because you have been excessively worried about certain things and you are allowing fear to take over your mind because just like the law of focus, whatever you focus on magnifies. So you've magnified your problems. So they now look insurmountable, you see. So and that over time could lead to high blood pressure because at that moment in uh, when you were, when it was happening in the night, you were actually, actually, triggered the stress response on the inside you see so your heart you were having palpitations your heart was beating faster than normal and then you were breathing shallowly you see so all these things can actually impact your overall health negatively because i think maybe later during the discussion we'll talk about um the different how stress has actually impacts the different systems in our bodies yeah Rich Afrique Magazine. Magazine is the award-winning and globally respected publication for authoritative information regarding business potentials and opportunities in Africa of interest to China and beyond. Your business doesn't get to Africa if it's not on Rich Afrique Magazine. We are the official magazine of Ethiopian Airline. What are you waiting for? You can contact us plus 861-3918943324. Your business is next in life. Introducing Panacea Ville. 
where love thrives and relationships flourish. Are you ready to embark on a journey of love and fulfillment? Our comprehensive programs are designed to help engaged and married couples build and maintain healthy relationships in their first decade. With our expert guidance, you'll learn the art of understanding and proper conflict management, creating emotional safety and deepening intimacy in your relationship. Join our group couple coaching, limited to five couples per group, where you'll learn practical conflict management tools and work through disagreements with ease. Discover the joy of a thriving relationship as you heal attachment injuries and enhance trust together. For couples at a crossroads, our intervention coaching program is the answer. We'll help you identify and tackle challenges at their roots, rekindling lost love, repairing past hurts, and creating a peaceful and stable future. Before you walk down the aisle, equip yourself with the knowledge for a successful marriage through our Before the Aisle course. Unlearn old patterns, develop practical money management skills, and foster an intimate, fulfilling bond. As a bonus, you'll be part of a supportive community with access to materials and continuous growth support. Choose Panacea Ville today and unlock the secrets to a happy and lasting relationship. Remember, a fulfilling marriage is within reach for those willing to unlearn, learn, and relearn. Well, I, I just wanted you to weigh in on, like, looking at what's happening economically, like globally. And for our listener who is also in Nigeria, you know, we are also going through a lot of crunch as it comes to the economy. Now, somebody will be out there wondering, so how do you manage this changing situation, the uncertainty that it brings so that it doesn't cause so much stress and it, it then impacts our health? Hmm. You see, life is full of uncertainties, you see, because we really don't know for sure. We can only plan. You see, we can only plan what we intend to do tomorrow, next tomorrow, one year from now, five years from now, ten years from now. But we don't know for sure, for sure, you see, that our plan is going to come to fruition. You see, so um, uncertainties is actually part of life. And what usually causes us stress a lot of times is how we feel about our past and how we feel about our future. Now, when you talk about this economic -ish situation, when we look into the future and we are not, we don't have a clear picture of the future, when the future does not excite us, when we don't have a clear picture, because because it's it, when it's big, we don't because of the economy, because let's say because of the economic hardship currently, you don't even know why. Because you are wondering now, my current salary is not enough for me to do X, Y, Z. Tomorrow is getting worse, and it's not like your salary is increasing the with the way the rate at which the um, dollar to exchange to our currency is increasing, or you know, so you're just thinking of the whole, and maybe you've not been able to look for other ways to get money and all of that. So you are, you begin to overthink these things. And you're, and you're wondering, you're like, if this were to happen, what will happen? You see, and then you begin to be so afraid. You're like, ha, that means I'll not be able to feed my family. So you're just creating these worst case scenarios. And you do that because um, you are not able to see a clear picture of the future. So you face the future with dread with fear, intense fear. You see, why? Because it's fear of uncertainties. You don't know what will happen. And you are not even, you feel like you're not even ready or prepared for what will happen. You see, so these uncertainties, they are actually part of life. Because sometimes it may not even just be about the economy. What about relationships? The economy also impacts relationships where maybe the man was providing before now, his ability to provide has been truncated you see and this leads to relationships so it's like it has a ripple effect in all the different areas of our lives you see and that can result to huge stress physical stress emotional stress psychological stress in our lives you see so um the only way that we can actually manage uncertainties is to actually focus on what we can control 
-hmm. You see, because uh, we have things that we can control. We have things that is outside our control. But we, and we also have things that is within our circle of influence. There are some things that we can influence. And there are some things that we can control. There are some things that we cannot also control. So first, you want to ask yourself, you see, I, I think I made a video on um, facing challenges some time back. And I was asking, first, you want to ask yourself, is this something I can change? You see, if it's something you can change, then you can go ahead and strategize on ways that you can actually change it. But if it's something you cannot change, for example, the economy, you cannot change the economy. That is way outside of your control. You see, so you cannot change the economy, but you can do something. What can you do? You can change yourself. You can only, so you need to focus on the things that is within your control. What are the things that are within your control? Your thoughts about the situation is within your control. You see, how you feel about it is within your control. Your perception and interpretation of the situation, that's, you see, the meaning that you assign to it is within your control because there are many ways that you can actually look at something. You see, when something has a square, for example, has four sides, you see, what if you have different colors on the different sides? And if you were looking at it from the side that is showing yellow, you would think the whole square is made of yellow. Not until you turn the other side of the square and you probably see that it's red. You see, and maybe you turn the other side, you see it's blue. So, you see, you have many ways that you can actually look at that particular same square. You see, so it's the same thing. When we change our perception or when we reframe our situation, when we change our perception of the situation or when we reframe the situation, and instead of saying, ah, because of this thing that happened, ah, maybe because of this, my life is over. You see, that's how some people actually look at the economic, like, man, this is just the beginning of my downfall. You see, and then that really begins to be, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So it becomes, you, that, that actually becomes the beginning of their downfall. You see, but if they think, oh, what if this is an opportunity for me to look for ways to earn extra income? What if this is an opportunity for me to look within myself and unleash my potential? That thing that I've been putting off, that thing that I know that I can do, maybe I can try to see how I can fit into my schedule, you see, so that I can do it alongside to make more income. What if um, this is the best time for me to look for partners for this particular thing? You see, you begin to, it, it all depends on your perception. You see, when you begin to change how you are seeing the situation, then it's how you see the situation, when how you see the situation changes, things will begin to change for you. You see, and then focusing on your behaviors, just like I said, your thoughts, how you feel about it, and your behavior, then the meaning that you assign to it. So focus on things that are within your control. For example, the presidency is outside of your control. The government is outside of your control. The whole economy is outside of your control. So if you focus on that, you're only going to keep focusing on how the dollar is increasing, and that will cause to create more stress because that will lead to depression and anxiety. You see, and it will create more stress. So you really want to focus on the things that you can control and then go ahead and take action on them. I am reminding you all to mark your calendars for a special celebration. We at Breed Africa Magazine Media Network are thrilled to announce that Emilia Bywaters will be hosting the third anniversary of daily nuggets on saturday november 2nd in beijing china join us as we come together to commemorate this auspicious event with emilia and all our esteemed associates globally let's make this day a day to remember filled with joy laughter and the spirit of one love don't miss out on this fantastic opportunity to celebrate and connect with friends old and new see you there be there or be squad welcome to bridge of freak magazine's official site 
the ultimate link you need in order to understand what it takes to do business in Africa, the land to which all roads in the modern business world lead. Every business sector in the world is rooted in Africa, directly or indirectly. Mama Africa, the cradle of mankind, has always been the source of life and illumination to the rest of the world. Through this magazine, we show you the beauty of Mama Africa and the diversity of the potential opportunities that await you as an investor, a tourist, or simply an explorer. The core team at Bridge Afrique is made up of young, dynamic African professionals residing in Africa as well as out of Africa in other continents. We work in close collaboration with partners all around the world to bring the latest information. Our goal is to be a link to an emerging Africa, the new hotspot for business deals and all sorts of investments. In the business world of today, all roads lead to Africa and we are proud to be the bridge. Relax and enjoy the fun as it wows you with all the information you have never read before in other magazines. Pray along with us and feel free to comment all your results via this medium. You know, as you spoke about uh, focusing on the things you can control and how you assign meaning, a quote that I love came into my mind. It says that when you change the way you look at things, the things you the look things at will change. change. Yeah, so I love that quote. And it, for me, it just came to mind. Maybe our listener too will benefit from that, that you can actually change the things you look at by just changing the way you look at it. Now, um, mm. going further, talking about the effect of stress on our bodies, I learned that stress, for example, has a lot of impact on our adrenal gland, that sometimes when people have been under stress for a long time, chronic stress continues and everything, and they eventually fall sick, some of them have enlarged um, adrenal gland glands that's to show how much stress that it has gone through so can you break down stress into the impact it has on our body and wellness as it were yeah so stress actually has lots of impact on our overall health generally you see so stress impacts all the systems in our body you see from your circulatory system to your respiratory system to your immune system to your lymphatic system so your digestive system, your, um, um, what do you call your central nervous system, all the systems in our body, stress actually impacts it. You see, so like for our, um, what do you call it, for our circulatory system, for example, you see stress, we actually lead to cardiovascular issues because it will affect how, because our circulatory system actually helps us to take nutrients and oxygen around the body. And it works together with the respiratory system, taking oxygen from them and taking nutrients from our food, you see, and distribute it around the entire body. Stress can actually impact it negatively because you see, just like I told you earlier in the first, just like we talked about in the first video, you know, we talked about how you have increased heart rate when the stress response is activated, you have increased heart rate, and then if it's continued, it, you know, it's just like when this trigger is, is, is started, um, let me give, I think the best analogy would be like a car that you started, just imagine you press the accelerator continuously, it's not stopping, you're not changing gears, you're not stopping, it's just continuously rising. And it's like that for one hour, two hours. You see, your car is going to have issues. That is how it is with us. So if you have consistent increased heart rate consistently for one hour, two hours, even when the external trigger has been taken away, because like I told you, sometimes the trigger is the one that we have conjured in our head, you know, of the hardship of the situation of things. You see, so that is psychological fear. Why one is physical fear? This one is psychological fear that we are creating in our minds. You see, so when that re a response has been activated, our heart rate increases. Now, normally, in acute stress, the short-term stress, when the trigger has been taken away, I mean, your heart rate will slow back to normal, and then your breathing will go back to normal. It will slow because your breathing was faster than normal before. So you were breathing shallow. Your breathing was shallow. 
You see, but now your breathing will go back to normal and then your heart rate will also go back to normal. But what if your heart rate does not go back to normal? You see, that con continuous tension leads to hypertension. Mm -hmm. So, and that could also lead to high cholesterol. It could lead to stroke. That's mm -hmm. how it impacts our circulatory system. And then it could also lead to, um, you see, like when you have digestive issues, because normally when you are resting in your relaxation state, that is when digestion is taking place. Because in your relaxed state, your body is doing like a cleaning exercise. It's taking waste away from the waste, the, the, the part where it's not supposed to be, and taking it to your organs for it to be excreted. And then it's taking nutrients around your body. That's what your body does in a state of rest. You see, but in this excitatory state, where the stress response is actually activated, that process stops. You see, and that can cause your stomach to secrete excess acid, which could predispose you to ulcers. It could also, that acid can start coming back up and lead to acid reflux. Mm -hmm. You see, so it can lead to digestive issues. And then for your, um, what do you call it? For your uh, repro reproductive system, it can lead to infertility. Because when mm. you are tired all the time, that, you see, when the stress response is triggered, just imagine the physical um, trigger that we talked about. When it's time to run, that is not the time to be in the mood for anything sexual. You see, so yeah. if you are in that constant exhaustion, that burnout state, that stressful state consistently, it will lead to reduced libido. And over mm. time, that can lead to infertility. You see, that can also lead to hormonal imbalance. It can create imbalance in your hormones. You see, for the ladies, it could lead to hormonal imbalance. And for men, the same thing. You see, and then you begin to have irregular periods. You begin to have other issues. And But in all of this, it can also lead to infertility. Mm. And then for your musculoskeletal system, it leads to aches and pains. That's why you see that when you are stressed, a lot of times you feel tension in your shoulders. You see, mm -hmm. just your shoulders are tense. Yeah, you feel aches and pains yeah. there. Yeah. And then you could also feel aches and pains in different parts of your body. You see, it could lead to a headache. Some people have constant headache. And instead of them to find out the root cause of this headache, so that they can deal with it from there, they keep popping paracetamol up and adult. And then it will mask the symptoms, but the, the main problem is still there. So it's repeating itself. So sometimes maybe because you didn't sleep well. So instead of you to take out time to rest to ensure that you not sleep well, improve the quality of your sleep, you're taking medication. But you're still not improving the quality of your sleep. You see? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes it could be all, as a result of other things. It could be as a result of stress, but you're not reducing your stress. You see, and these medications, you just keep popping them in. Eventually, your system gets used to it. I say, Panadol does not work for me anymore. You move to Panadol Extra. Oh, that does not work for you anymore. Then you're looking for stronger painkillers. You see, and, mm -hmm. these, and these medications, they have side effects. So, you are just basically destroying your system small, small. Instead of mm. treating the root cause of the problem, you are treating the symptoms of the problem. So the problem is never going to go away. It's going to persist. You see, so uh, stress also impacts our mood, our nervous system. We become tense. We become easily irritated. We become moody. And when you are constantly moody, you become depressed. You see, that's what leads to depression, anxiety, and delight. So you really, really want to work on that. And stress can actually lead to sleeplessness. You find that you are unable to sleep, just like the first scenario I described to you earlier. You know, you want to sleep, but then you start thinking of your problems, and then your body is tired and wants to sleep, but your mind becomes suddenly at a lot, and then you cannot sleep. You see, so you want to really work on this so that you can sleep well. Because sleeplessness leads to stress, and stress also leads to sleeplessness. So it's they are intertwined, actually. You see, so it impacts 
all the systems in our body. So you want to ensure that you are actually managing your stress. Because if you don't, your stress will manage you. And trust me, it's not a good master. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a good master at all. So as you as you spoke, obviously we can see that virtually every sickness can be caused by stress. Even though we know yeah. that stress may not be the only thing, but stress can lead to all these ailments. So I was thinking, what's the way out for someone who already has high blood pressure that is stress induced or has problems with infertility and all that is stress induced? What can they begin to do to manage it now so that it doesn't get worse, if possible, even improve? Yeah, um, first thing first, right? First things first. So the first thing they need to do is to see their doctor. You see, they need to see their doctor so that um, the doctor, that's where to be, that's the very first place to start with, right? And then after that, they need to adopt a healthy lifestyle. Now, we'll talk about a healthy lifestyle. They need to eat right. They need to exercise regularly. They need to sleep well. They need to rest well. They need to supplement their diet. Now, we'll talk about um, exercise, for example. Exercise actually helps us to change our physiology. It helps us to change the way we use our body. You know, because how we do anything is how we do everything. You know, we when someone is depressed, you're using your body in a depressive manner. That's the reason why you're depressed. You see, and if somebody is happy and excited, you're actually using your body in that happy manner as well. You see, so you cannot be happy and sad at the same time. It's not possible. You see, so yeah. there's a way, there's a habitual way you use your body. So in the case of that, you want to exercise regularly because exercise has a lot of benefits. It can actually help your whole system to function optimally. And it helps to change your focus and concentration. You see, it also helps to improve all the systems in your body. And that can actually just help to shift. Because when you're able to change your focus or change your physiology, how you move your body, that, you see, your, your attention will shift. Because mentally, you were focusing on something, right? Because, you know, our thought leads determines how we feel at every given point in time. And our feelings determines our behavior, you see? So... When you are able to change how you use your body, that automatically affects what you're focusing on. If, for example, we are here and they say, get up, move. Your attention has to leave where you were mentally to come to this present yeah. moment, to know that you need to move. You see, and then when you carry yourself and move from there, you have been able to shift your mental focus. You see, so changing your physical exercise actually helps us to change our physiology. And like you already know, exercise helps to... Um, it does a lot for us, actually. You know, it helps to in increase our human growth hormone and it also helps to get all our systems functioning optimally. You know, it can actually get your blood vessels to pump well because when you are constantly stressed, your blood vessels will not be pumping well. You will always be forgetful. You see, so if your blood vessels is not pumping well, that's when you begin to develop issues medically so exercise can actually do all of these things for you and then talking about eating right you want to ensure that you eat more balanced diets you want to eat balanced diets it's not about if it's not it's not um about if your food is expensive or not you see when we talk about eating well it's not about going to the most expensive restaurants to eat no it's about eating balanced diets you just include more fruits and vegetables in your diet because a lot of times our diet, as you already know, it does not contain majorly fruits and veggies, you know, majorly carbs. That's our diet. So you want to ensure that you include other sources of foods, you know, so basically eating balanced diet because how you eat, what you eat, and the time you eat impacts your overall health. It affects your sleep quality. So you want to ensure that you are eating well at the right time. Because you cannot be eating well at the wrong time. You see, you cannot be Please, eating can I, can like stop you here? No? Can I stop you here? So because I've heard a lot about this timing for food. 
when to eat. So please don't just gloss over it. Give us like maybe a, a an optimal eating time for people because I know that it also affects weight gain, the way we eat. It affects also our moods and our emotions. So please just give us like um, optimal times to eat lunch and all. Okay, yeah, so like you rightly said, stress, I, I, I didn't mention that stress actually could lead to visceral fat, you adding weight in your belly region. You see, so for some people, why stress actually make them to lose weight? For some others, stress causes them to add weight. So um, there is something called the natural body circle, right? There's something called the natural body circle. So your body operates in an eight hourly clock every 24 hours. So the first circle starts from 4 a.m. 4 a.m. to 12 noon, that's the first eight hours. Now in that time, your body is actually in the elimination phase. It's trying to take out the toxins from the previous day digestion. So the things that you eat should be things that will actually help that process, you see, of eliminating the waste from your system. So that's when you should eat your light meals, very light meals. You see, fruits and vegetables are the best things to eat then because if you notice, they take about 30 minutes to digest. You see? So mm -hmm. it's not going to disrupt that process of elimination. But when you eat those heavy meals, it's going to actually disrupt the process of elimination. And then if possible for people that can, you see, when you talk about intermittent fasting and all of that, you should not eat at all till 12. And then from 12 noon to 8 p.m., that's the second eight hours. Now, the body is in the digestive phase then. So you see, your body is ready to digest the foods that you eat. And if you notice, your lunch and your dinner falls within that time from 12 noon to 8 p.m. So you see, but if you eat like 6, 7 p.m. in the night, fantastic, because you have enough time, because a lot of people, some people sleep by 10, some people sleep 9, 10, 11, some sleep by 12. You see, you have enough time for your food to digest or for the process to start, you know, go down before you go to sleep. But if you notice, during this time, a lot of people skip meals. For example, somebody could skip breakfast. And then during lunchtime, they remember how they eat breakfast and skip lunch. Or sometimes they, they skip breakfast. And then later in the day, they remember, oh, I haven't really eaten anything today. Maybe like 2, 3 p.m. They remember. And then they are thinking, what's the fastest thing I can eat right now? Let me use myself as an example. I'll be, oh, chicken pie and mineral. And then I get it. You see, and then in the night, we get home. Being in this, our busy country, and in a state where you have so much traffic, you will get home like 9, 10 in the night. And that is mm. when you now want to eat. At that time, you now remember that, ah, I didn't eat in the morning. In the afternoon, I didn't really eat. You feel like that thing was like snacks. You know, mm. it's not real food. So you'll be yeah. like, it's now I want to eat. You see, so you're not eating a bar or fufu or something. 10, 11 or 9, 10, 11. You see, which is after 8 p.m., which is the second phase. Now, the third phase is from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. again. And that time, the body is in the absorption phase. You see, is in the appropriation phase. It's actually doing repairs. Repairs of your walnut cells and tissues because our body actually heals itself when we provide it with the right nutrients. You see, so when you provide your body with the right nutrients, it will heal itself. So during that 8 p.m. to 4 a.m., your body is repairing your walnut cells, damaged cells and tissues. But by the time you are eating heavy meals then, it's going to disrupt that process. And mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to experience, I have a first-hand experience of this, when I had neurodermatitis, you know, and I had sore, you know, I had rash, and then I had wounds all over my body. Now, these wounds were not healing. You see, this time my sleep was affecting it. The food I eat, the kind of food I eat, the eating time, it was all affecting it. You see, if you, if you are always eating late in the night and you are sleeping late, 
the wounds, they are not going to heal faster. It's going to take wow. a longer time to heal. Yes, it's going to take mm -hmm. a longer time to heal. So you want to ensure that during that time, you are not eating. What you can eat that time too should be fruits and vegetables, things that is very easy to digest. But your major meals should be done in that second eight hours. That second eight hour phase of 12 to between 12 and 8 p.m. That's when you actually want to do that. So it's important that we begin to learn to incorporate this so that we can optimize, we can eat well to optimize our health. Yeah. Wow. You know, you know, as you talked, I I could see some so many lines that were so true, even for me. Like when we when you eat late, two things could happen. You either find yourself struggling with indigestion, especially if you have to sleep early, or you would be so hungry the following day because that food is like your body just carried it and kept it. It didn't use it. And then you are now looking for the energy to use the, ne the next day around. So, so when, as you spoke, I said, wow. And then giving us that idea. So from 12 to 8, the most optimal time to eat within the day. That's so powerful and helpful. If we can, like find a way to plan around our schedules so that even when we're going out, we carry food along and all we eat within that time, we will be helping our bodies maintain health and even helping our stress levels. Wow, that's interesting. I mean, every time I think yeah. about food, generally, I'm looking at weight gain, I'm looking at that, but also now I'm thinking about stress and attaching it with food is really an interesting um, combo. So um, I want you to give us your removing our attention from this um troubling situation beginning to change how we think and all just give us some ideas that we can begin to incorporate into our daily life to help us manage life's challenges sorry you were frozen for a while i think the network okay. yes i didn't get the beginning part of your question yes okay so basically my question is someone is listening to us today and wants to say how do i move from here to begin to manage my stress better, manage the situations that life has thrown to me better so that I can have a healthier life and live long. Yeah, um, you actually want to engage in relaxation technique. You see, because stress and relaxation, they don't live on the same block. You are either stressed or you are relaxed. It's the same thing with creativity. Stress and creativity, they don't live on the same block. When you are stressed, you are not creative. Forget those people that tell you, I work well under pressure. Now, if you can say, I work well under pressure, it's only in a short term. If you are constantly under pressure, trust me, you will not be working well. You will notice errors, mistakes in your work. So you want to ensure that you are working from a relaxed state of mind because then you are more productive and innovative and creative. You see, so you want to ensure that you practice relaxation techniques. You want to, every day you want to do this. So when you are able to do this on a daily basis, first, like I talked about in the previous video, is breathing technique. You want to engage in breathing technique. You want to regulate your nervous system by breathing. So through breathing, you can actually slow down your heart rate. And when you practice this consistently, it has a lot of benefits. You see, because like I didn't talk about how stress impacts your immune system, it actually lowers your immune system. You see, so, but when you are breathing, when you practice breathing technique, this can actually help to boost your immune health. You see, it will help to boost your immune health. It will also help your, to improve your focus and concentration. It will help to boost your memory. You will not be forgetful, like because a lot of when you are stressed, you will not remember a lot of things. You think would have passed, be like, oh, I forgot this thing again. You see, you will always mm -hmm. be forgetful. So you want to ensure that you reduce your stress by practicing relaxation techniques. And we have lots of relaxation techniques. We have the breathing technique. You know, we are, and then in practicing breathing technique, there's something that is very important that we need to know. There's the rule of lungs, you know, which states that you need to exhale twice as much as you inhale. 
So when you exhale twice as much as you inhale, yes, you're actually helping your system to ex excrete. Because what do you do when you exhale? You're taking out toxins from your system. You see, so you're taking out more toxins. And then when you inhale, you're taking in oxygen. That's what you do. And then the, you want to also move to other breathing techniques, especially the four, seven, eight techniques where you inhale like to the count of four, you hold your breath to the count of seven, and then you exhale to the count of eight. Now, when you inhale and then you hold your breath, you're actually helping your system to circulate that oxygen properly in your body. Because when you're breathing shallowly, you don't get proper circulation of oxygen. So you are starving your cells of oxygen. And when you constantly starve your cells of oxygen, that's what leads to, that's the basis of sicknesses and diseases. You see, so when you practice breathing technique, you're actually helping to oxygenate your cells very well. And that could help to boost your immune system. And because then you'll not be able to take out more toxins than you are bringing in. You see, and then that will help to improve your overall health. So breathing, breathing technique has, actually has lots of benefits, you know. And then we have the mindfulness, practicing mindfulness, you know, bringing your awareness to this present moment. You know, when we talk about mindfulness, a lot of people think of the Buddhist monk that is seated in a yoga mat, you know, chanting some kind of incantation and all of that. But that's not what mindfulness is about. You know, mindfulness is basically practicing being present here in this moment. You see, being aware of your thoughts, your feelings, and your behaviors, and your moment-to-moment -moment experiences of what's going on around you. You know, basically being an observer of your thoughts without any form of judgment. Because we do this, but with a sense of judgment. We're like, ah, see what you just did. How can you be this stupid? You see, we're always judging. And then we assume we are the voice in our head. We cannot differentiate it. And then we believe everything that voice in our head tells us. You see, that leads, that activates our negative chatter and leads to our self-criticism. You see, and that leads to our stress. So you want to observe what's going on because the first step to changing anything is becoming aware. First, you need to be aware of what's happening. Because it's when you are aware of your thoughts, your feelings, and your behaviors, and you know how they are impacting you, that is when you cannot begin to make conscious choices. You see, you want to learn to respond and not react to them. So in essence, you want to learn to be a thermostat and not a thermometer. Because what does a thermometer do? A thermometer reads the temperature of an environment. You see, but a thermostat regulates the temperature. So you want to be a thermostat regulating your emotions your thoughts regulating your thoughts your feelings and your behaviors you see and not being a thermometer reacting to it because we are constantly in a state of reactivity we are always reacting to what somebody said what somebody did reacting to the thoughts in our head you know so you want to ensure that you are not in a state of constant reactivity so you want to learn to consciously choose your thoughts make better decisions and better choices and you can only do that when you practice mindfulness you notice what's going on you know because when the stress like i told you i told you that the two major causes of our stress is how we feel about the past you know that's what leads to excessive worry something we know we had done we are filled with regrets you know things we did or didn't do and then or we are thinking about the future with dread you know, because of the uncertainties, the fear of what could happen, you know, so and we are never fully present in this moment. So we are here, but we are either in the past or we are in the future. So bringing yourself to this present moment can actually help you. Okay, this is what I'm doing. Even eating, mindful eating, because a lot of times people eat mindlessly. And that is why a lot of people gain weight. Mm. because you are eating mindlessly you are eating you are thinking of the past so you are thinking of the future something ah, this thing that you want to do that you need to do you don't even know how your food tastes then there's a tendency for you to overeat yes mm. and then you are not treating your food properly because you are in a hurry and then this leads to indigestion because improper digestion leads to malabsorption of the food mm. 
And that means the nutrients will not be absorbed. So you want to ensure that you are eating mindfully. When you eat mindfully, you will notice how you feel when you are eating. You will savor every bite. You will also learn to chew your food properly because if you chew properly, it will lead to proper digestion of the food. And if you chew properly, it will also limit the amount or the quantity of food that you eat. You can actually practice this next time you're eating. Mm -hmm. When you chew it more, you will notice that you eat less portion than normal. You see, and that can actually help in portion control. You don't necessarily have to always limit the quantity. Just chew, learn to chew your food properly. You see, so mindfulness, practicing mindfulness in eating, in your work, in everything you do. You know, a lot of times people are living in a beautiful environment, but they don't even notice the beauty around them. Why? Because they, they have mental preoccupation. You see, so practicing mindfulness in everything you do can actually help you because then you learn to be a thermostat and not a thermometer. You learn to respond and not to react. And then another thing that you can do in managing stress is also time management. Managing time, prioritizing your task. And then also um, learning to, to spend major time on major things, things that are important to you. Because a lot of times we are prioritizing um, things that are not so important to us. You see, and that can, at the end of the day, we start to scold ourselves. Now you don't have enough time to do this thing. You see, we activate the negative chatter again, stress. So mm -hmm. you want to learn to manage your time. Basically, self mastery. You want to learn to manage your time. You want to learn to manage your emotions, manage and regulate your emotions. You also want to learn to manage your thoughts, your feelings, your behavior, know when to say no. You know, effective communication, becoming more assertive, emotional intelligence. You see, learning to read the, the, the emotional state of people and then choosing how you want to communicate to them, communicating in a way that um, um, you are not, you are not, um, how do I explain it? Communicating, having better communication, you know, considering other people's emotions while you communicate with them. You know, and then learning to be assertive, learning to speak your mind without offending other people. You see, learning to say no when you're supposed to say no. Because a lot of times we take on too many tasks mm -hmm. that we can normally take. And then with that's because we don't know how to say no. And when we say yes to people, we are saying no to the things that are important to us. So no, mm -hmm. learn how to say Learn to say no when it's the right time to say no. And then learn to say yes. Ensure that when you're saying yes to people, it's not to your detriment. You see? Because if you practice these things, it can actually help you in managing stress. And then there is another technique, um, breathing uh, relaxation technique known as the PMR, Progressive Muscle Relaxation Technique. You know, it's where you tense and relax your muscles. Actually, did a course on this, I, I have a course that I'm selling on this, you know, progressive muscle relaxation technique where you tense and relax every muscle in your body. You know, it's when you do that, it's like receiving massage. You see, so it actually helps you to relax. You know, what relaxation does for you is that it helps you to put you in a resourceful emotional state so that you are better able to handle the challenge that you're faced with because it's not going to solve the problem, obviously, you know. And then mm -hmm. another thing people do or another thing you can do to manage stress is listening to music. You see, mm -hmm. listening to music can be therapeutic, but it depends on the kind of music, relaxing music, because some people have linked, it depends on the kind of music, like I said, relaxing music, because um, there are some music that triggers some certain emotions for people. For some, they have linked pain or some painful memories to that particular music. That's why you listen to a music and, oh, it reminds you of the sad moments in your life. Or you listen to it yeah. and you remember one very exciting moment in your life. You know, So you want to learn to listen to relaxation music. And there are some relaxing music you know, that actually helps you to sleep better. You know, So 
you want to do that. So there are so many techniques to actually managing stress, but I think for the sake of time, I'll stop here. Yeah. And this yeah. has, has been really rich. You know, when you talked about chewing, chewing your food longer, I, I would try it like, do the two and see how it works, right? <laughs> try eating on the fast and see, and then try slow and see if it actually helps reduce the quantity. Because I'm really intrigued about that. And then you talked about this progressive, um, progressive relaxation. Relaxation. Yeah. relaxation. I, I've done a, a session like that. I've been part of the session and I really enjoyed it. So we we'll also want to know right. the details so that we can share it with our listener. They get to, they, they can contact you as well if they're interested in having that kind of experience to use that, to have it as a tool to use when they are stressed or when they are worried, when life hits them you know from the other side because we always we we face that is part of being alive is part of being human so we'll get those details from you and share it with our listener let them get uh, on board as much as they could or can to benefit from it thank you so much for your time thank you for being here with us i'm sure our listener are so blessed to have you to hear all all that you have said we have been speaking with coach Bruno Obute and she has been sharing with us so much from her life so much from her work experience now if you have been here you know that this woman is loaded she has so much knowledge and skill that she can help you with your stress level so if you also need help one-on-one -on -one help she is the person to go to she's the person to reach and get that help from Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your time once again. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank so you for this, having me. Yeah, we are so glad you obliged. So we've come to the end of Path to Wellness today. This is brought to you by Bridge Africa Magazine and Panacea Ville International. I'm sure you have enjoyed this episode. Please leave us a comment. Um, send a message if you have questions also write we'll be glad to respond to all of them for now is bye from me my decent record I'm not gonna grab me if not by hard work. Ah.